come to the Father's house. So good to see you this morning. Let's stand to our feet. Let's declare who our God is. Let's open our hearts to all that he is. And let's sing like we've never sung before. I praise away to you with the dawn. Our souls away to you and lift a song. We've seen the things that you have done, and still we know the best is yet to come. There's more to come. Open the gates and let your glory come down. Open our hearts and let our worship pour. Victory, you're changing everything. Open the gates and let the glory come down. Open our hearts and let our worship pour out. Open the gates and let the glory come down. Open our hearts and let our worship pour out. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's all sing this together. Let's invite him. We're, he's already here. What we're really doing is we're opening up ourselves and saying, God, I invite you in. I invite you in. It's my choice that I want you to come and flood this space because there's nobody like you, God. Sing this with me. Come flood this space. Come flood this space. No one else could take your place. Come have your way. No one else could take your place. Come flood this space. No one else could take your place. Come have your way. No one else could take your place. Open the gates and let your glory come down. Open our hearts and let our worship pour out. Wow, wow, wow. So good to see you this morning. As we stand and open the service, let's pray. We want to pray for a couple of things. First of all, we want to continue to pray for Australia and the fires. Um, second of all, we want to pray for um, uh, Puerto Rico. We'll be sending some money there this week to help. Uh, we have a missionary there that we help sponsor. And we'll be sending some money this week to help in some of the rebuilding of some of the southern areas where they've been hard, hit a little harder with the uh, uh, earthquake. And I talked to Jonathan this week, and he said almost every day afterwards they've had small tremors. So we want to continue to pray for them. Also, Raylan, my granddaughter, is finishing her uh, training in Tuwamba, and she'll be going to uh, Thailand at the end of this week so let's continue to pray for her as they'll be doing street ministry and uh, ministering to uh, different people there in a different way but let's pray and then after this uh, we're going to uh, in just a minute we're going to pray for any personal needs that you might have so let's pray this morning father god we come to you and uh, we lift up 
We lift up, Lord, the crisis around the world of some of our friends that are going through. Lord, we pray for Australia. We pray for uh, almost 30-something people that have been killed in this, in this fire, for the billions of animals that have lost. Lord, we ask you to have mercy and send rain, Lord, and we pray for our friends and our churches in Puerto Rico that we're part of. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen them, lift them up. Let this not be a time of just devastation, but let it be a time uh, of um, people drawing close to you, Lord, and as we come alongside this week and send some uh, money to help in some of the rebuilding in some of the areas uh, that doesn't get a lot of broadcast on the news. And we lift up Raylan and her team that will be going to Thailand this week. And we pray, God, that as they minister to uh, the prostitutes at night and as they uh, have street meetings, as they minister to the kids in orphanages, as they do all the other things, we pray your protection and your care over them. In your name, Jesus. In your name. In your name. You may be seated, but before we pray for individual needs, we're in the midst. This is the second week of our 21-day fast, and for whatever level that you're fasting and asking God, I hope it's been very beneficial. But we're already beginning to see some miracles that are happening, and I want you to hear of a couple of those miracles today. Maggie and uh, Andrea. Yeah, so um, so as Pastor said, we're in these 21 days of prayer and fasting and, and just disconnecting from the world and connecting with God and, and just submitting ourselves to him and whatever he wants to do. Well, last week on Tuesday, I had one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. So that was awesome. I, um, <laughs> I was downtown Tavares um, near the courthouse and was with about 10 other people um, from the church. And uh, we were walking down the sidewalk and I had cute little wedges on and I'm walking down and, and the back of my heel caught an unevenness in the sidewalk and I rolled my ankle and I tried so hard to stop myself from falling. But you know, sometimes when you try really hard, the more you try, the more you fail yes. at it. So um, I fell flat on my face in front of all of God's creation, uh, rolled over, my hair is like, like this, I'm laying on the ground and um, I look up and everyone's standing around me and of course I'm so embarrassed. I um, mean, what do we do when we're embarrassed? We play it off and we fake it till we make it. So I was like, I'm fine, I'm fine, Everything, everything's great. So uh, my husband and Sam helped me up and um, I limped my way to the car in complete and excruciating pain and embarrassed. Drove here to work Tuesday morning, limped around in pain all morning and then it came to noon prayer time. I put some uh, prayer music on as we always do from Monday to Thursday. Uh, we put prayer music on at, at noon, and anyone is welcome to come in and pray. And I sat in the back and uh, took the chair in front of me, unhooked it, turned it around, and just propped my foot up. And I just kind of sat there for a little bit and um, just kind of soaking and, and just kind of getting my mind right. And I just began to declare who God is, declare his character, that he's a healer that he is the one who moves mountains, that he split the Red Sea, that he raises the dead, that he makes blind eyes see, that he makes the, the deaf um, hear, that he makes the mute speak. And I said, God, what is an ankle to you compared to all of those things? It's nothing. And God, I know and I believe that you can do it. And I just began to you know, continue to pray, pray in my prayer language. And then I got done at the end of the 30 minutes of prayer time and turned the chair around and rehooked it, and then I stood up, and I thought, <laughs> yeah. Adam, are you kidding me? Like, I don't know why that was my reaction. Are you kidding me? I declared it. I declared who he was. I declared his word over my ankle, but I was like, okay, so there's no more pain. Let's see about walking, and I walked, and I had no limp whatsoever and I was just so Thank amazed God. so Thank I've God. been like telling everybody that I Thank could God. all about because what does his word say He's, he says that we're supposed to tell of his good works and his deeds so I went up the next morning because uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to Maggie on Tuesday on Wednesday morning I went up to her office and I said Maggie can I just share something with you and then I shared it and then I'll let her tell the rest of the story so on Wednesday, as part of my fast, I chose to do a solid liquid fast because I wanted more of a challenge. So when Pastor Andrea came up and shared her healing, I or her, what, she, what God had done for her, I heard um, ask her to pray for you. Because in 2012, I had run a half marathon, which I promise you I will never do again in my entire <laughs> life. 
But ever since then, when I fractured my foot, I've been in uh, constant agony. It is excruciating pain, um, just a lot of damage in my foot and Achilles tendon, so it's difficult, and I've just uh, assumed I would always be limping. So when I heard have her pray for you, um, we came down for noon prayer, and I sat, I think, somewhere over there, uh, and she said when she sat down, she propped her foot up, so I sat down and I propped my foot up, <laughs> and um, I closed my eyes, waiting for her to come and pray. So she brought the oil, uh, the oil, and she did what the Bible says um, to anoint, to anoint with oil and to pray over, over you. And she's my pastor, so she prayed over me. So while my eyes were closed, um, and I'm hearing, I'm feeling her touching my knee. Um, I'm feeling uh, hands touching my feet. I'm hearing her pray um, for me. She's, she's declaring the word of God over me. Uh, Jeremiah 17, heal me and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved. I will praise you, Lord. And so um, I am um, praying in my prayer language, believing. I'm hearing whispering and I'm hearing other prayer language. And I, I assumed at that point that it was Pastor Nita that had come up. Well, when, I, when Pastor Andrea was finishing her prayer and I opened my eyes, there wasn't another person but Andrea standing around my foot. And I assumed that, again, that Pastor Anita had gone off to um, do some more praying. But when I asked Andrea, she said nobody was there. Wow, wow. But I'm going to tell you, I felt hands on yes. my feet as her multiple hands on my feet moving around yes. while her hands yes. were on my knee. And I forgot to tell you this. Go ahead and praise him because there's more. Thank you, God. Woo! <laughs> so about a month ago, I forgot this part, my knee, I felt something in the back of my knee pop. And so I haven't been able to straighten my knee. So you add that knee with my foot and my ankle and all of that, it has been, and that was one of the things that prompted me to ask her to pray. So when I got up, when I found out that um, I had felt the multiple hands and I heard the whispering, but I didn't remember the whispering until that night. And I had texted her and I said, I remember hearing whispering of prayer language. Again, I assuming it was her. So I know that there were ministering angels. Yes. There was a cloud of witnesses or yes. there was yes. something going on that yes. day. But yes. here's the thing. When I got up, I didn't experience pain free. I experienced what I normally do and I limped back to my office. But I believed and I kept declaring, heal me and I will be healed. And so by the time I got home, I noticed that I wasn't limping and I didn't have pain. Somewhere in the middle of, I don't know, around 8 o'clock or so, I texted her. And I said, you know what? There's no pain in my Achilles. Amen. There's Amen. no pain in my foot. Um, there's a little bit of tenderness still in my knee, but I'm believing for, um, that God will continue to heal me. And the other thing is, what happened was the enemy tried to start putting doubt that the healing's not going to last, that when you wake up in the morning, you're still going to be in pain. But I remember um, Pastor Andrea said we had to focus on what we, uh, what we declared of God, what we said, and what his word says is true. If, he, if I asked him to heal me, I will be healed, and that's all I kept saying. So when I woke up in the morning, no pain in my Achilles, no pain in my foot. Wow. There was a tenderness still in my knee. And over the next couple of days, the pain has tried to come back, but it's not there because I keep declaring the word of God and I'm stretching. So yes. thank you, God, I'm not in yes. any pain anymore. Thank yes. you. Yes, 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 yes. And we rejoice in that. We give God thanks because by his stripes we're made healed. The prayer team is coming down this morning and we're going to take time to personally pray for you. Scripture said to anoint and pray the prayer of faith and we're going to do that today. So here's how we'll do that. If you need a prayer time, if you need prayer, if you'll step to the aisle and come down front, one of the ushers will direct you to someone who will anoint you with oil and pray with you today if you, uh, if you need uh, some sort of healing. So if you'll do that, if you need prayer for healing, if you need prayer for guidance or strength, just go ahead and stand and come on down. And I want to pray for those of you that are watching online. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the Lord would heal you, that he would touch you, that he would be with you. And uh, right now, wherever that pain is that you have, just lay your hand right there. And I speak in the name of Jesus for healing to come forth in the holy name of Jesus. Okay, if you need prayer this morning, come on down. If not, just where you're sitting, just stretch your hand out. And let's release our faith with those who need prayer today.
From the beginning to the end, for the Lord is good, so is good. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus, you at the center of it all. The center of it all. be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, and nothing Jesus, your center, everything revolves around you, Jesus, you, Jesus, be the center, it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus, be the center, it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus be the center of the church. Let me end.
invite you to stand if you're in the congregation. We're about to make a request, and I don't want to do it with just us. This is the heart of us as a congregation asking God to be the center of this church. And everything that we do in this moment and every moment beyond that. Let's sing this together. Jesus be the center of your church. Let's sing that again. Jesus be the center of your church. Let's sing it again. Jesus be the center of your church. Repeat it. Jesus be the center of your church. Let's sing it again. Jesus be the center of your church. Let's make it personal and say this church. Jesus be the center of this church. Simply come, long just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song of a song in itself. Is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's
It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words, no one could express how much you much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry the thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Forgive us for what we've made it. When it really just simply is all about you. Father, help us to further in this, this 21 days of fasting and prayer that we would truly empty ourselves of ourselves. Empty us of the world so that we may be filled to overflowing with you, God. so much more that you have for each and every one of us. The best is yet to come, God. It may have been good back here. It may be good right now, but the best is yet to come. And we know that in order to get into the best is yet to come, we've got to submit and surrender to you, God. So in this moment, if you feel comfortable, would you just raise your hands? This isn't a, a Christianese thing. This is a a sign of surrender. And if you truly, truly feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit this morning that you need to re-surrender right now. Re-surrender your entire life. Can I just tell you that God is not done with you if you are in this room and breathing? God is not done with you. So Father, right now as your children, as your sons and your daughters, we stand before you, arms up high in surrender to all that you have for each and every one of us, God. We submit to your plan, not our plan, God. We submit to your plan for our lives, for our lives individually, for our lives as a family, for our lives as a church family. Whatever you want to do in this house, God, and beyond this house, we submit to you, Father, in all that we are. 
in all that we do. We love you, Father. We worship you. We worship you, and when we worship you, we know that worship is putting you on the throne, so we take ourselves off of the throne right now, and we put you back in your rightful place. You are in your rightful place, God. Let's just sing that one more time, just the voices. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. people said. Amen. Why don't you give him praise? He's an awesome God, isn't he? His presence is so sweet. Before you take a seat, would you just turn to a couple of your neighbors and would you welcome them to the Father's house this morning? house. We are so excited. If you didn't get a Sunday experience guide, our ushers are coming down the aisles now and they would love to serve you. So just slip up your hand if you didn't get one of those. It's got your notes in it um, for you this morning. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Andrea and I'm the worship pastor here at the Father's House. And you're new. Who are you? I am known as Andrea's husband. <laughs> That's my claim to fame here at the Father's House. Actually, I do have a name. My name is Vance. Yes, this is my husband, Vance, and um, we want to welcome you to the Father's House. If today is your first day with us, we are so excited that you're here. If you can do us a favor, we all do this. We pull out a connection card in the seat back in front of you. Just pull that out and fill out as much information as you feel comfortable. We definitely want to, if you're brand new here, we definitely want to get some information from you because we want to invite you to something that we call... The House Party, which is actually tonight. That's right. From 5 to 6, and uh, it's a great opportunity if you've never been or if you have um, first-time guest, we invite you to come tonight uh, to meet the staff, the pastors, some of the team leaders here. It'll be a great time. I recommend you come in for sure. So make sure if you signed up that you show up tonight, and uh, if you didn't get a chance to sign up because today is your first day, we want to still invite you, so make sure you come out to the house party at 5 o'clock. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on around here, but the only one, other one thing that I want to talk about is social media, uh, social media and also our website. Make sure that you're following us on social media so that you can be up to date on all of the stuff that's going on. We have um, a lot of information to get out to, to you guys, so that's a great way that we can get the information out to you. So, Pastor Tim, hey guys. what are you doing? I'm getting ready to set up for the tailgate party. Dude, that's not today. Sure. Yeah. I thought it was today. No, you didn't register to text, did you? Or text to register, did no, you? No, I didn't. I really meant to, though, but I, I just kind of forgot. And... Well, if you had, if you would have known that it wasn't today, you would have got the right info. I guess like I the date and time. Pay attention a little bit better to the announcements and stuff, huh? Yeah, you probably should have. Wow, even on staff, huh? How about wow. get your phone out now? I and let's do, do that. that right now. Yeah, let's do that. Guys, come on, man. We have a tailgate party coming That's up. That's right. It is actually on Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to get you out in time to go home and watch the Super Bowl, put your feet up. So let's check this out. It's going to be up here on the screen. Get your phone out. Go Niners. <laughs> well, I don't know about all that. But text. we're going to text tailgate to the number that's going to be up here on the screen, right? 
It's not That's up right. on the screen, so I'll tell you what it is. Tell it's me, Pastor Andrea. Do you have your phones out? Come on, guys. guys do you have your come phone on. Out? All okay, you guys. So pull up this. your text messages and text tailgate to 352 352 329 2301. 2301. How easy is that? Tailgate, no space. Oh, there you go. Okay, no space. Come on, guys. I want every guy to show up. Men's ministry this year. Brotherhood. We're going to have a great year. That's right. Um, dude, aren't you fasting uh, junk food? Yeah, I was kind of trying to figure out how all that was going to work with the party. So I'm glad it's not today. <laughs> hey, as we leave, watch this video. <laughs> if you love a good bowl of chili, baked goods, or vendor shopping, then join us on Sunday, January 26th immediately following the second service for our second annual chili cook-off and bake sale to help send kids to summer camp. You can purchase tickets by texting CHILI to 352-329-2301 or go to the next steps wall in the foyer. On the day of the event, don't forget to bring your ticket or digital receipt and spending money to spend with our vendors. Get your ticket today and be a part of building the kingdom by sowing into the next generation. step process that happens on the first, second, third, and fourth Sunday of every month to help you connect with the church and make a difference with your life. Join us on Sundays at 11 a.m. in the growth track room in the main building. You don't have to sign up, just show up to find out how you can make a difference. Something or someone will have first place in your heart. find your identity in the one who created you, it will change your whole perspective. What have you allowed to define you? to whatever you give your heart to. Wow, a lot of great things, and I know that you will make yourself uh, available to those. They're going to be awesome. In your prayers, please remember Anita. She's down there back. She's hardly able to move for the last couple days, and uh, so just lift her up in prayer. You have your Bible with you? If you have your Bible, let's hold it up. And uh, let's say this today, this is my Bible, it is the Word of God, it is life to me. Today I receive the Word, I confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, I am obedient, and I will never be the same again. Amen. Father, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we don't just come to church for religion, but we come to experience your presence, and your presence is here today. Now, Lord, as we look into your word, I just pray that you will do what I can't do, and you bring the clarity of the word, Lord. I, I can say the words, Lord, but you have to bring the anointing, and help me to say exactly what you want me to say today. Give us clarity, give us uh, uh, understanding today, and Holy Spirit, we thank you in advance for what only you can do in your name. 
Well, the question I'd have for you this week is, did you make a difference in anybody's life? You know, it would be sad if we would say that we're a Christ follower and we live an entire week and we never make a difference in anybody else's life. The theme verse for this series, Make a Difference, that we've been looking at is there in your notes and it's the first one. Would you read it with me this morning? God has created us for a life of good deeds which he has already prepared for us to do. Uh, Good deeds. He wants us to make a difference. But I can't make a difference in somebody else's life if there's not a difference in my life to make a difference. Does that make sense? So as we're beginning a new year, we're saying we want to be sure that we use our life this year to make a difference in somebody's life. So how do we do that? Sometimes people make New Year's resolutions. Sometimes people say, well, I'm going to do this big thing or I'm going to do that big thing. But what I really realize is that we need to be consistent. It's there in your notes. We need to be consistent with the little things in our lives so that over time they will have a huge impact on others. It's not that one day you wake up and presto change, oh, you're in this super person or, uh, you know, you go to the gym one day and the next day you walk in and you look like Arnold. No, it's not that. It's the, it's the continual thing, doing the little things. So last week we said this also. Read it with me. It's often the small things done faithfully that no one sees that result in the big things that everyone wants. A lot of people say, well, I want to be like you, or I want to have that financial security, or I want that, but they're not willing to do the little things. So last week, I said instead of a New Year's resolution, I want you to pick one word, pray and ask God to give you one word that will be your motivation for the rest of this year. How many of you did that? You you got your one word. Okay, those of you who couldn't raise your hand, let me give you your word. Your word is procrastination. (laughs) Because we said we have to have a predominant thought to keep us moving. We said last week that your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits become your character, that's really who you are, and your character is what makes a difference. So today we want to talk about that first one. We want to talk about the thoughts we have, the pictures in our head. Uh, Song in Proverbs 23 and 7, it says, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As I think in my inner being, that's that's how how it is. If I... uh, If I think I can't, I can't. If I think I can, I can. If I do the right things, it's all in the process. If you wake up every day and say, oh, this is going to be another bummer of a day, of a day, day." or you wake up and say, you know what? I believe with the Lord's help, this is going to be a great day. A scientist by the name of Lynn McTaggart says this. It's on the screen. The next couple things, you may want to take a screenshot of this because it's worth knowing. She said, a thought is not only a thing, a thought is is a thing that influences other things. A thought is not only a thing, but a thought is a thing that influences other things. The scripture says, as I think in my heart, it's going to influence me. My thoughts will become my words. Dr. Caroline Leaf, who has been here before at the Father's House in some of the ladies' meetings, in one of her latest books called Think, Learn, and Succeed, a book I would really recommend you to read, She said, whatever you think about the most will grow. If you're thinking about something daily, within approximately two months, your brain has changed to accommodate this pattern of thoughts. Think about that. If you start today with that thought, that that word, and that word becomes a thought, and you work on that every day for two months, then your life begins to move in the direction. Our life moves in the direction of our thoughts. Let me, uh, uh, let me show you something, would you? Just lay down your notes just for a minute and take your hand and put it out in front of you like this. Would you do that? Just put your hand out in front of you. Now, would you, just, would you just close your eyes? Go ahead and just cooperate. Don't fall asleep. Just close your eyes. Now, would you just uh, see in your hand there a nice, big, juicy lemon? I mean, it's a big, big, ripe lemon. Now, would you just pull that lemon up to your nose and take a smell of it? Just smell. Just take a smell. 
Now, would you bite into that lemon and just begin chewing the inside of that lemon? Would you do that right now? Now, if you did that right, I'll tell you what happened. Immediately, there was an increase in saliva that happened in your mouth because the picture that you had in your mind. Not that you had that, but it was a picture in your mind. And so you're thinking, man, now I'm really hungry. I've been fasting, and now I'm going to eat a lemon. It's giving me all this saliva. But you see, it's that picture in your mind then that affects the rest of your body. So number one today, here's what I'm going to encourage us to do. As we leave today, I want us to think about our thoughts. Think about our thoughts. Because not every thought that comes through your mind should you allow to keep there, right? Negative thoughts, negative thoughts can't produce a positive life. Negative thoughts can't produce a positive life. Proverbs 4 and 23 says this. Would you read it with me? Be careful how you think your life is shaped by your thoughts. We need a checkpoint in our mind. Some of us had words spoken over us years ago, you'll never be anything, you'll never amount to anything, you'll never find anybody who wants to marry you, you're a failure, you're, you'll never succeed. And so those words may not be true, but if you've allowed them into your mind and you've accepted them and you, you uh, meditate on them, then those thoughts begin to direct our life. Norman Vincent Peale said, what the mind can conceive and believe and the heart desires you can achieve. Here's what you need to write down in the next line. My life will always move in the direction of my strongest thought. Thoughts, my mind, my life will always move in the direction of my strongest thoughts. So if your thoughts are not after God, then you're not moving towards God. And listen, we can have this 21 days of fasting. You could do whatever level of fasting that you're doing. But then afterwards, if your thoughts haven't changed, you're going to go back the same way. And next year when we get around and say, let's do a fast, you'll say, man, I'm going to have to fast about the same things over and over and over. Why? Because we don't change our thoughts. I'm going to give you a thought test today. Don't fill this out until I sort of explain each one of the things that are here. But I'd like for you to think about your life this week. Your life this week. So there in your handout, if this week, uh, maybe you spend a lot of time worrying, worrying about your kids, worrying about your finances, worrying about life, worried about what's going to go on in the world. Or maybe uh, this week, you were very peaceful. Peaceful, not that nothing happens wrong in your life, but when bad things happen in your life, you don't, you don't just freak out, but you say, well, this is not good, but I'm believing because God is with me that everything is going to be all right. So where would you be on that scale? Be honest. This is, you don't turn in your notes. Nobody else is going to look. But do you tend to be more worried on that scale, or are you a person that's very peaceful? That God's got it all, it's going to take care of it. To thine own self be true. Liars will be friars, right? <laughs> if you can't be honest with yourself, nobody else can help you. If you can't be honest with yourself, I can't help you. I'm just a babbling brook. That, that's all I am. I'm just a gong symbol because I can't help you unless you recognize where you really are in the process of your thoughts. Let's look at the next one. Do you tend this week, have you been more negative? <clears throat> I mean, some of you feel like that negativity is a spiritual gift. I mean, you have the ability to see the wrong in everything. And uh, you say, oh, no, that's just who I am. That's just my, no, just be honest. You're a negative person. You're a negative person. Or are you a person that says, you know, I'm, I'm more positive. I see the, the glass, you know, half full, not half empty. I'm just that kind of a person. Um, you know, you walk in the church today, and instead of seeing everything that wasn't right, you start saying, oh, wow, well, that was good, and this is good, and that's good. Or when you meet somebody, uh, you don't immediately pick them apart for the things that are not right, but you begin to see things in them. So go ahead. To thy own self be true. The Holy Spirit is looking over your shoulder. Are you more negative, or are you more positive? And then the next category is worldly versus eternal. 
worldly, by that I don't mean that you're a total heathen. You know, you say, I'm here today. But I'm saying with worldly thoughts, you, you think more about your car, you think about your house, you think about the money that you're making, you're thinking about that uh, duck bill selfie that you took, if anybody's going to love it. Is that the most weird thing you've ever seen in your life? People do these things and take a selfie. I mean, I'd like to know the history of that. A lot of thoughts came in my mind that are probably not good thoughts. But I, but I, I wonder, so we, we worry about, it. Did we wake up, did somebody like that, that I, what I posted? So we're all concerned, and, and we're, it's not wrong to have things, and it's not wrong to love the things that you have. But on the other aspect, there's the eternal aspect. When I wake up in the morning, I wake up with a thought something like this. Wow, this is a day that the Lord's made. Man, I, I can make a difference in somebody's life today. I want to use my life for his glory. So when you look at that, are you more worldly or are you more eternal in your thoughts? Just go ahead and circle whichever one that is there. Because we need to think about our thoughts. Paul, I guess that's why that the Lord uh, moved on Paul's heart to write in Romans 12 and 2 which is on the back of our vision bracelet that you have uh, that we gave everyone last week. If you weren't here, as you go out the front door, you can pick up another one. On the inside is the verse, Romans 12 and 2, that simply says this. Would you read it with me? Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by what? By what? changing the way you think. You think, no, no, I think it should be like a Holy Ghost revival. I, I think it should be like goosebumps running up and down. I think it should be, no, he says, changing the way that you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Change the way you think. Look at your neighbor and say, that's what you need to do. Change the way that you think if you want to see some different results. Listen to me. This is January. How many Januaries have you faced and you've made New Year's resolutions? You said, this year I'm going to do this. And January comes. It's like at the gym. You know, the first few weeks at the gym, you have to park a block away to get in the gym. But let it be like two weeks later and you can have an upfront parking place. Why? You know, that's what it is. Oh, we're going to eat healthy and let, let three or four commercials come on TV and you change the whole thing. Or this year we're going to start off by financially being secure. We're not going to spend more than we take in. And then those big sales come, you know, first of the year. And then you get back in the same habit. But what about this year? What about this year if you can say I, things are going to change this year? And they're not going to change with something big. They're going to change with my thoughts. Because the Bible said that my life can change if I change the direction of my thoughts. So how do I change the way that I think? Here it is. This is the next fill-in. Capture your thought lies. Capture your thought lies. Just because the enemy tells you a lie doesn't mean that you have to receive it. Uh, Paul said, for the weapons, for though we live in the world... We do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they are divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And read this, read this last part of the sentence with me. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. He doesn't say, Holy Spirit, please capture my thoughts and make them right. He says, no. It's the little things that you do faithfully, consistently, that's going to make a difference. What is that? I'm going to, I'm going to change my thoughts. The thought comes in, you're, you're nothing, you'll, you'll never make it. No, no, that's not true. If Christ lives in me, how can I be a nothing? How can I be a nothing? But it says that we, we don't fight like the world has fight, but we have divine power. See that word power? That's the word dunamis from which we get dynamite. It just means an explosive power of God to do away with strongholds, to do away with lies. The word stronghold there is the word oteroma, which means a prisoner locked by deception. A prisoner locked by deception. 
That just simply means pretend, see this picture, an old castle, and there's a, there's a prison cell in there, and somebody puts you in there, and they walk around, and they walk out, and they pretend to lock the door, and so there you are locked. But if you went over and if you push the door, it's not locked, and you can get out. So here's what the Holy Spirit is saying through this passage. You don't, you're not locked in by those lies that have been told to you for years, but he's given us a divine power to make a difference with our life. What's the enemy's greatest weapon? He's called the father of what? So what lie has he been telling you? Oh, I'm, I, I can't make a difference. I'm no good. I'm a screw-up. I'll never amount to anything. I'll never get married. I'm divorced, and I've got kids, and I'm old now. Nobody would ever want to marry me. No, no, no. We have to take those thoughts and make them obedient to the Lord. The truth is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of my testimony. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And he said, I have good thoughts about you. You, not thoughts of evil, but good thoughts. So I take that lie and I say, I'm not going to receive that lie. This is what God's word says. And so I think on that. The second thing is we have to focus our thoughts on truth. Focus our thoughts on truth. You see, you have to do something to, to replace that lie. You can't walk in a room that's dark and say, I curse you, darkness. You can shake your fist at darkness. You can speak in tongues at darkness. But guess what? Darkness is still there. But if you walk across the room, flip the light switch, darkness disappears. So you see, it's not enough just to realize there's a lie that's been holding me back, but now I need to replace that lie with the truth. I need to turn the word, the light on to replace that. So Paul says in Philippians 4, 8 and 9, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Read it with me. Fix your thoughts. Now, he's in prison. Don't you think he would say, fix your thoughts on how bad things are. Fix your thoughts on how tough you have. But watch what he says. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise, then the God of peace will be with you. Some of you today are one thought away from having a total, completely changed life. One thought. One thought. You know, there's a big difference in a buzzard and a hummingbird. A buzzard is always flying around looking for what? Something dead, right? But a hummingbird is always flying around looking for something to eat, for nectar. So how do, how do I do that? How, how do I, instead of always looking for the bad, how do I begin to reprocess my mind to think about the good things? How do I do that? Well, maybe the first thing in the morning when you wake up, instead of checking your phone to see how many posts that you have and how many people that liked your duck bill selfie that you took yesterday, How about, I mean, and, and, I, and we laugh because we all feel, oh, I feel, I feel, how did he know? How did he know? <laughs> and, and so we, we, we do that. You see, some of us remember the time before cell phones. And you didn't wake up and have to look over and roll and look at that. You looked over and rolled and saw the person you were married at and said, I hope they brush their teeth quick, all right? But how do I change that? How do I, how do I take away something that's negative and how do I begin to look for something that's sweet? Well, maybe the first thing in the morning, instead of, uh, instead of looking for my phone or, or groaning, I just pray a prayer like this. God, thank you for this day. It's going to be, this day is a gift from you. My gift is to give you back my life. Use me this week, today, for whatever you want to do to make a difference. Help me to be sensitive today to the Holy Spirit. God, let me see you or where you're working. Guide my words, guard my thoughts, create my actions to bring glory to you. God, I give you permission to interrupt me all throughout the day. Help me to see where you're working and I'll join in on you. And then when you get in your car and you get ready to go to work or you're getting ready to go to the gym, instead of playing that uh, music that you've always played before, what about putting a little praise and worship on? 
What about having nothing on and just spending some time and just saying, Lord, I love you, or singing yourself, making up a song, writing a song, or maybe listening to last week's podcast so you can get that teaching more down into your mind. And then when good things happen during the day, you won't say, wow, that's really interesting. Something good happened to me today. No, because your thoughts have been directed to him early in the morning, you'll say, oh man, thank you, Lord, for bringing favor into my life, for blessing me in this way. It's so, so good. In my daily confessions, I've got written at the top of mine for this year, remind myself that it's going to be a good day, a good day. And so every day I wake up, and it's going to be a good day today. Whatever comes my way with God in my life, it's going to be a good day. So I'm just saying, you were one thought away. Now, last week I said, what's your one word? I shared with you last week the word that the Lord gave me is the word endurance. I need to finish things that I start and be more consistent in that. And then I said, we need a scripture verse to go along with that. And I shared with you my scripture was James 1 and 4. Then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. So I'm sure most of you, it's 10.02, let's pray our prayer that the Lord said we need to pray for the Lord of the harvest to send labors. And so we do that here at the Father's house at 10.02 a.m. and 10.02 p.m. every day. And out in the foyer, there's a little note card that has the prayer that we pray. Here's our prayer. Can we pray it together? Lord, you ask us in Luke 10 and 2 to first pray earnestly for workers into your harvest so that at 10.02 a.m. and p.m., we pray that you would stir your people's hearts and open your people's eyes to the need of reaching the lost. Send out workers for the harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you're doing that. That wasn't a fad. That's something that we continually, continually do this year because the harvest is great and the workers are few. So I don't know what your word. Tell your neighbor what your word is. Would you do that? Just share them what your word was. You know, what was your word? And... Uh, and I know you picked out a verse for that, but here's today. Here's, here's, the, here's the thing that we're going to do this, this week. So we have one word. Now, this week, we're going to pray and ask God to give us one thought, one thought that will help us to live that one word, that one thought. So, so I said my word is endurance. I gave you my scripture. So here's my one thought. I have the strength. I have the strength of God to accomplish and finish everything he's called me to do. So I read the verse, I think the word, and now I think the thoughts. I'm changing my thoughts to be the motivator for that word. So be sure you do that this week because next week we're going to take that one step farther. So if you get two weeks behind, it's going to be hard to catch up. So, so do that. Maybe you say, you know what, I, uh, my word is selfless. I've been a very selfish person, but I need to be selfless. Well, here's, here's your thought. Less of me and more of him. Wouldn't that be great when I did? Less of me and more of him. Or maybe you say, you know what? My word is generous because I've really been stingy. Well, then your thought could be, I'm a generous person. Or it's more blessed to give than to receive. Or maybe your word is committed because your marriage is shaky. And uh, you've even thought about divorce. And you've thought, well, I... I just, I just really, what's the one word? And the Lord says, committed, committed. But what you gave your heart to, you're, you're committed to that. So maybe your word is, I will love him or I will love her as Christ told me to do. Wow, that puts a whole thing on that. I will serve them as Christ told me to serve. So what's your one thought? What is your one thought? That the, that's the, goes in that fill in there. And the verse that says, may all your thoughts be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. We're talking about thoughts. Now, you can take notes. I can help you in this series. But unless you do the work, this January, next January is going to be the same thing. You're going to be back the same thing. May, you're going to be struggling with the same thing. But I'm telling you, if we do this, if we understand the power that God has within us, that we can make a difference, and it starts as we surrender our thoughts and take them captive to him. So 
Would you close your eyes and just, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Would you pray this prayer with me? I will not copy the customs and the behaviors of this world, but I will let God transform me by changing the way I think. Then I'll know God's will for me because I do not fight with weapons of this world, but my weapons have divine power to demolish strongholds. I will take every thought captive and I will make it obedient to Christ because I fix my thoughts on what is pure and admirable. If there's anything excellent or worthy of praise, I'm going to think on such things. And I believe the God of peace will be with me because as I think in my heart, I can become. You say, oh, Terry, that's too easy. How could one thought make a big difference? Listen, you've tried a lot of other things. How about trying this? How about trying what the Word says? And next week, we're going to take that a little deeper. We'll talk about not only our thoughts, but we'll talk about our words. You don't want to miss next week, because I'm going to give you some daily confessions that you can confess over yourself, things that are true, not fluff, not fluff, but things that are true from God's Word. Let me pray for you this morning. Would you close your eyes? Father, I pray right now that you would help each of us to make a difference by starting with a difference in our own life. That this January is not going to be like all the other Januaries. But this January, Lord, we're focusing on that one word, that one area, that one thing that you want me to be focused on. That one thing, what is that? And now, Lord, we're going to add one thought to that. One thought that's going to help me in that area. And so, Lord, we just ask you, as every head is bowed and every eye is still closed, I, I also want to give an invitation today to those of you that may be here. And, you know, you've gone to church. You know about God. You know about Jesus. But you've never personally invited him into your heart and into your life. Scripture says, John 3, 16, that God so loved us that he gave us his only son that he could die for us, for our sins. You see, he loved you so much. God created you that you would have a relationship with him. He wants to give you an eternity with him. He wants to give you a day-by-day -day walk with him. And you say, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about that. And one day... One day, you know, I, I just, my life is in such a mess. Just a, if, if I can just straighten out a few things, if I can get a few things working in my life, then, uh, then, then I'll, I'll, I'll come to Jesus. No, we never can. How much good do you have to do? How many things do you have to turn over to get right with him? You see, if you could do it by yourself, then it would have been senseless for Jesus to die on the cross for your sins and my sins. That's not a fable. That's not just a Bible story. But that's something that happened because it's so real. Because God wants you to have a place with him. But he can't look upon sin. And so he sent his son Jesus to pay the penalty for your sin. And right now, I know there are some of you that it's, you don't even understand what's going on. But it's like a, a magnet. To, you're just sort of being drawn to Jesus. It's just a thought that I, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. I need to surrender my life to him. In just a minute, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, and I'm going to pray with you. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I'm going to pray with you. The greatest thing that can happen in your life today is that you leave out of this building today knowing that your sins are forgiven, that your past is forgiven, that the present is full of the presence of the Lord, and your future is a hopeful place with him. Now, as this church is silently praying, Maybe you're here today and you say, you know, years ago I was on track with God, but I've kind of gone away from him. But today you say, you know what, I want to rededicate my life to him. Maybe for the first time, or maybe just rededicate today. So as the Holy Spirit is drawing you this morning, doing what only he can do, I'm going to ask you to just raise your hand and make eye contact with me and say, that's me, Terry. That's me. 
I need to make that decision today. I need to make that decision today to invite Jesus into my heart and into my life. Thank you. Others today that would say, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Others today, thank you. Others today that would say, that's me. I want to invite Jesus into my heart and into my life. As best as I know how, I, I, just, I, just, I just feel him drawing me this morning. And maybe that's you watching online. I'm going to ask you right there where you're, where you're standing to pray with us in just a minute as I, as I lead you in this prayer. So maybe you raised your hand or maybe you didn't raise your hand today, but you know, you say, you know what? This is the day that I want to come to Jesus and surrender my life to him. So let me lead you in a prayer. I can lead you in a prayer. I can give you the words, but you have to surrender your heart. Would you pray this prayer? This is a prayer that nobody should ever have to pray alone, but let's pray this prayer together. Father God, I thank you for loving me. Thank you for caring for me. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, to come into my life, and to be my Lord and Savior. I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart that you died for my sins. But on the third day, you rose from death. And because you rose from death, I can have new life. As best as I know how, I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap for those who prayed that prayer today? Wow, wow. In just a minute, the ushers are coming to receive our tithe and offering. Thank you for being so faithful in giving every week. Thank you for worshiping God with your giving. Uh, we drop our change in. That goes to, for benevolence. If you want to do a special uh, missions offering for Puerto Rico, we'll be sending that this week. We're going to send some. But if you say, you know what? I just really felt led of the Lord to do that. So in that giving envelope, if you'll just write in there, uh, PR Puerto Rico, we'll uh, send that on down to John and the churches that he's uh, overseeing there in Puerto Rico and help them. Those of you who prayed that prayer this morning, invited the Lord into your heart, would you bring that connection card out to the next steps wall? I have a gift that I want to give you there. And if you're a first-time guest, if you'll bring that card out to the balloon table, we have a book that we want to give you of just saying thank you for coming and being with us today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't miss next week. Ushers, would you come? Let's... Uh, Let's present our tithe and our offering unto the Lord this morning and our change that goes to change the world. Don't mix next Sunday. Bring somebody with you. It's going to be an awesome time. We're going to keep building on this. And uh, like... Uh, Andrea said, if you'd like to come for noon prayer, the church is always open for noon prayer. I ask you to continue to be faithful with your fasting for whatever level you're doing. If it's one meal a day, if it's a total fast, whatever it is. And uh, the results may not come immediately. The results may be you plant a seed and, and down the line, this, this somewhere down the line this year, the results would come. Would you stand? Let me bless you today. Wow, thank you for coming. I love you today. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So awesome, so awesome, so awesome that you're here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you'll just lift up your hands, let me bless you. I bless you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I bless you with godly thoughts. I bless you with truthful thoughts. I bless you today with the ability and the grace to capture wrong thoughts that you've listened to for years. And I give you the grace to replace those with God's truth in Jesus' name. As we leave this week, we're going to do three things. We're going to love God, we're going to help people, and we're going to build the kingdom. God bless you. Thank you for coming today.